OK, so thank you. So today I'm going to talk about the local multiplicity problem for spherical varieties. And I will talk about two specific models. One is the ginsburg rice model, and the other is the generalized Schalega model. So in my thesis, I consider the ginsburg rice model case, and I prove that the summation of the multiplicities over any tempered organ effect is always equal to 1. And now in an ongoing joint work with Rafael bazar Plisis, we are studying the generalized Schalega model. And we are trying to show that the multiplicities will be always be a constant on every discrete L packet. So it's two different phenomena. For one model, the summation is equal to 1. And for the other one, it's basically a constant. OK, so let me first tell you what is the local multiplicity problem. So you start with the G should be a reductive group defined over local field, F. And you let H contain G be a closed subgroup. So usually we require like G call H to be a spherical variety. And then you let pi be an irreducible representation of GF. And the chi, be, uh, oh, say oh, omega, be a character on HF. And then you are locally you are interested in the home space, say home HF of pi omega. So in particular, we care about the dimension of this space, which is denoted by m pi. And it's called the multiplicity. OK, and, uh, so in many cases, this multiplicity is also related to, say, London functoriality or L functions, Ipsilon factors. OK, so this is, in general, you, once you have a group G, H, you have a character, you can study the multiplicity. So now let's move to the specific models. So I'll first talk about the ginsburg rice model. So basically, I only need to tell you what is g, what is h, and what is omega. So in this case, g will be gl6. And your h has two parts. So it will be the semi direct product of h0 and u. And here, h0 will be the diagonal gl2. So h, 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 will h in gl2. And u will be basically some unipotent subgroup. So it will be this i2, i2, i2 x, y, z. Well, of course, x, y, z are 2 by 2 matrix. OK, so now we have the group. Then what is the character? Well, so we fit, in order to do that, we need to fix an edit character psi on f, and also a character chi on f cross. OK, then the character psi will induce a generic character on u which we will denote by C. So from uf to c cross, which is simply by mapping this i2, 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 x, y, z, you map it to psi of trace of x plus trace of y. I mean, the most naive generic character. And then in the meantime, the chi will also induce a character on this h0, on this g2 part, which we will denote by omega from h0 to c cross, which is based by mapping this h, h, h. You map to a uh, chi of determinant of h. OK, and then once you combine these two characters, you get the character on h. So combine together, you get omega tensor c will be a character on hf. OK, so now we have our character. Then we give given, so let pi be an irreducible generic representation of g of f. Uh, here, generic means it has a Vidaga model. And uh, we send your character chi square. So here, the send your character is just to match the character here. So it's not a big deal. Then we can define the multiplicity m pi to be the dimension, ah, I guess I need to tell you f is the local field of characteristic 0. So in other words, it can be periodic r or c. OK, now the multiplicity will be the dimension of the whole hf of pi omega tensor c. OK, so we have our first model. 
this is GL6, and with some h, and we can define the multiplicity. But then in order to consider the formulation of the L packet, you also have to consider some forms of this GH. So in other words, now if f is not c, I mean, if f is c, the field is algebraic closed. So the, this is the only model. Now if it's not c, then you let d over f be the unique quaternion algebra. And then you can similarly define this GDF to be GL3D. And similarly, you can define this HD sorry, and say H0D, UD. So all you need to do is to replace uh, the GL2 there by GL1D and the 2 by 2 matrix by D. So it's quite. And uh, similarly, you can also define this omega D tensor C D, which will be a character on HDF. OK, it's defined in the same way as omega tensor C. OK, and then we can also talk about the multiplicity. So now let pi d be an irreducible representation of GDF, still with the central character. Uh, chi square. Then we still let m pi d to be the dimension of the home HDF uh, of pi d omega d tensor C d. Okay, so now we have two multiplicities, and uh, so we want to study the relation between them. And uh, before we do that, we first want to match the representation pi and the pi d. So here is in GL6F, here is in GL3D. And this is known as the local Jacquet Langlands correspondence. So in this general case, it was proved by Deling, Kashdan, and Vinerus. And uh, so we, we do have a map between the representations. But here I do want to make a remark. So the original Jacquet Langlands correspondence gives you a bijection between discrete theories. But here you require pi to be generic representation. So you basically naively generalize the original one to the other generic representation by parabolic induction. But then there is the issue. Not all the parabolic subgroup in GL6F has an image in GL3D. It is only those with even partitions has an image here. So the remark will be, this pi d may be 0. So in other words, if pi is induced from some parabolic subgroup with all the partitions, then you just let pi d to be 0. Pi will be fine. OK, so now once, and the local is L packet is basically pi and pi d. OK, so now once we have this set up, then we can state the theorem. So, so in my thesis, I consider the tempered case. So now assume pi is tempered. And uh, let pi d be the Jacquet Langlands correspondence. Then we always have m pi plus m pi d equal to 1. OK, so in other words, the summation of the multiplicity over this L packet is always equal to 1. OK, and then there is a second part of the theorem, which is called the Ipsion dichotomy conjecture. So you know, now you know that one of the, them is 0, one of them is 1. Then the question is, well, when is m pi equal to 1, when is it equal to 0? And for this, I only have some partial results. So I'll say at least when f is Archimedean, of course, pi is still tempered. Then we have this m pi equal to 1. If and, if and only if the local exterior cube epsilon factor is equal to 1. And m pi is 0. If and only if the epsilon factor is equal to negative 1. OK, so in other words, you know the summation is 1, and you know when m pi is 1, when it's 0. And uh, here for the PID case, I only have some partial result. Yeah, uh, in the PID case, I can only prove it when pi is not a discrete series, or the probability induction of a discrete series of GL4 times GL2. And the issue here is, in the PID case, it's hard to define this epsilon factor. So in my proof, I directly using the local Langlands co correspondence to define this epsilon factor in the Galois side. But in general, this is very hard to deal with for PID case. 
OK, so this is the, the theorem for the ginsburg rax model case. And uh, so I definitely don't have time to talk about all the proof. So let me just give you an idea how the proof goes. So the proof uses uh, the method invented by Wasfield J in his proof of the local gangor prasad conjecture. So in other words, we want to prove a local trace formula for this model. So the key idea is to prove a local trace formula for the ginsburg rice model. And this trace formula will tell us some multiplicity formula for all temporal representations. So this, I'll write it as m pi equal to m geometric pi. And m pi d equal to m geometric pi d. So what is this m geometric pi and m geometric pi d? So this, roughly speaking, this will be some in integrals of the germs. So I, I, I'll explain this of theta pi and the theta pi d. So what does this means? Well, we know giving you a representation pi, you can associate it to the uh, distributed character theta pi. And uh, it was proved by Harishandala that locally near every semi-simple element, this theta pi can be written as a linear combination of the Fourier transform of the near potent orbital integral. And when you have the linear combination, the coefficient is called the germs. So this will be the integral of some uh, germs over some torus. And uh, this is what the trace formula tells you. And then once you have this multiplicity formula, then you know that when you add them up, so you only need to do the right-hand side. But then the local Jacquelin correspondence also gives you the relations between theta pi and theta pi d. So in other words, you are able to cancel out many terms here. And the only term left is the germ at one which by the work of Rodia, you know it's one. So this is roughly how the proof goes. OK, so this is what's going on for the ginsburg rice model case. Yes, so in the next two minutes, I'll tell you what, we are try what I'm trying to do for the general Schalega model case. So, no, for the Schalega model. So now, First, I still need to introduce the model. So now in this case, f will be a periodic field. And your g will be g of 2 on f. And your h will still be the union of h0 and u. Well, now here, this h0 will be diagonal g of n. And U will be the unipotent. So by this, by a very similar way as the ginsburg rice case, you can define the character on there. So you can define this character on H, which allows you to define the multiplicity. OK, but then in this case, so in the ginsburg rice case, the middle H0 is just GL2, but here H0 is GLN, so it has more forms. So now, for any decomposition, say n equal to MD, then you let D over F be a division algebra of dimension D squared. Then you can consider its forms, so GDF will be GL2MD. And you can also define HD and omega D tensor cosy D. And finally, the multiplicity M pi D. So basically, for any decomposition, N equals MD. And for all the division algebra, you can have this model. And then you still use the jacquet lines correspondent to match pi and pi D. But here, since the model is not strongly tempered, it's only strongly discrete, 
you want to make a requirement that pi here must only be a discrete series. And then by the jacquet lang correspondence, you know pi d also always exists, and it's also a discrete series. And then the thing we are trying to prove, so this is joined with, I should say, I feel that precise. And then the thing we are trying to prove is m pi always equal to m pi d. So in other words, the multiplicity will be a constant on every uh, discrete L packet. OK, so thank you.